In this video, we will discuss melanin and more specifically whether melanin blocks or reduces vigilance of fear. Firstly, we will demonstrate that vigilance is essential for a society to become economically developed and prosperous. We will also demonstrate that if melanin reduces vigilance, then African countries must speak intense alarm languages to raise vigilance and then become developed and prosperous. Before we discuss the issue of whether melanin reduces vigilance, let's first look at what is vigilance and why it's important for economic development. Millions of years ago, vigilance has evolved so that an animal can identify and react to danger. The alarm goes out. And the baboons take no chances. Vigilance has also evolved to help the animal identify and react to opportunities. In humans, vigilance has the same evolutionary purpose. In historical times, it served the purpose to avoid danger from a predator or from an invader. In humans, Vigilance also served the purpose to identify and act on opportunity such as hunting or conquest of other humans. In the modern world, Vigilance is essential to organize and run a prosperous and productive economy. Modern society is highly complex and requires vigilance to be managed well. Modern humans need to be vigilant to identify dangers, to make sure everything is running well, and modern human needs vigilance to identify opportunities to make improvements in manufacturing techniques and e efficiency in services. A society that is more vigilant will make better products as any errors are more likely to be identified by vigilant people and manufacturing improvements will be quickly identified and implemented. If a society does not have vigilance or is complacent, even if it has talented and capable people, it will still be poorly organized and managed. There will be lots of delays, errors, and there will be low productivity, as people do not pay enough attention to dangers and opportunities in the modern economy. You cannot have an industrious and prosperous society if the majority of the population are relaxed and complacent, where people are happy, laughing and dancing.
an interesting question that arises is why are some societies highly vigilant while other societies are complacent or are not vigilant? The answer to this question is that vigilant societies speak languages which have many alarm sounds in them. While complacent societies speak languages which do not have many alarm sounds in them. ऐसा कुछ मैं बोल रहा नहीं उसको हिंदी उसको हिंदी ठीक से समझता नहीं है इससे बड़ा तो पागल है बेवकूफ इंसान में जिंदगी होने देगा To understand this idea one has to firstly look at alarm sounds in nature and here we have a number of examples of alarm sounds produced by various animals The first example is an alarm or distress call produced by a magpie bird Next we have a distress call or alarm sound produced by a rat. The next example of a distress call or alarm call is that of a koala. And the final example is that of a cotton tail rabbit. We can see that the distress or alarm sounds have a lot of similarity to that of a human cry or scream. And here is an example of a human scream. When listening to or when producing distress or alarm calls, we become somewhat distressed or alarmed ourselves. In fact, alarm or distress calls automatically prepare us for fight or flight, where a person or animal becomes more alert, focused and attentive to the environment. Here we have an example of such behavior in a deer where it's listening to distress calls and you can see how its head is raised so it can see better ears are also raised to focus on the sounds its eyes are widely open to maximize its vision and its movements are nervous and very alert Vigilant societies such as China, Germany and US speak languages which have a high concentration of this type of alarm sounds. So normal alarm or distress calls sound like ah, e, ow, ai, a, an. However, the less intense version of these distress or alarm calls are a e ao ai a an so let's look at some examples of german words where there are this type of alarm sounds eins eins Zwei, zwei, drei, drei. Here we have the first three numbers in the German language. Eins stands for one, zwei stands for two, and drei stands for three. 
part of the word eins is ein and that part is the distress alarm call ein 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 also the numbers zwei and drei have the i i i distress or alarm components English also has a lot of alarm sounds in it, as it is a Germanic language. However, the German language contains slightly more intense alarm sounds, and this explains why the German society is more economically competitive. So, let's look at some examples of English words where there are this type of alarm sounds. Why? 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 Chain? 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 In the word why, the part that is distress or alarm call is actually the entire word. Why? 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 Part of the word chain is ein, and that part is the distress or alarm call. Ein, 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 ein. Chinese Mandarin is perhaps the most intense alarm language in the world, where almost all words contain alarm sounds, and that is why China is such a major economic power. Let's take a look at some examples of Chinese words and the alarm components in these words. Piao, piao, piao. Shui, shui, shui. Chuan, chuan, chuan. Here we have three Chinese Mandarin words. The first word is piao. Part of the word piao is yao and that is the distress or alarm sound yao 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 the next chinese word is shui and part of shui is wei wei and that part is the alarm sound wei 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 the final word from Chinese Mandarin is Chuan. Part of the word Chuan is Wan, and it is that part which is the distress or alarm sound. Wan, 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 Wan. Germany, England, China, and virtually every country which is highly productive and wealthy speak languages which have a large number of words with alarm or distress parts in them. And these sounds make the productive and wealthy societies more focused and attentive. Just like the deer in the following video is more focused, attentive and alert to danger when listening to alarm calls. So let's analyze the possibility that higher melanin might cause a reduction of vigilance. It is well known that the more direct or stronger the sunlight or the ultraviolet rays, the darker the skin of the indigenous people that live there. On the other hand, the weaker the sun and usually the colder, the lighter the skin of the people. It is also well known 
that the skin pigmentation or melanin protects the skin from sun damage. It acts as a powerful sunscreen. So the darker the skin, the stronger the protection from sun or the ultraviolet rays. Another well-known fact about melanin is that it affects the production of vitamin D. Where the darker the skin or where there is more melanin, it blocks the strong sun rays from penetrating the skin around the equator where the sun is the strongest and as a result it reduces the production of vitamin D uh, which is advantageous as overproduction of vitamin D is toxic to the body while lighter skin does not block sun rays and allows for sufficient vitamin D production in areas closer to the north and south poles where the sun is much weaker and when, where it's much colder. What is not well known or researched is that melanin, which is produced by the melanocortin system, at the same time produces testosterone. So it seems that the more melanin is produced, the more testosterone is produced. Another aspect of melanin that is not well known is that melanin might affect vigilance. Where the lower the melanin, the higher the vigilance might be. One might ask why such simple research or analysis has not been conducted. The reason is that such research in academia is a tabooed subject. People can't talk about, can't ask questions, and if they do and they're politically incorrect, they get removed. A central question of interest in this video is, does increase in melanin reduce vigilance? The answer seems to be yes, when melanin is produced by the melanocortin system to protect the organism from extreme sun rays, it also reduces arousal of the cortex to protect the organism from overheating. That is why we see many animals in extreme hot weather relaxing or sleeping. Their cortical arousal is very low. Lower cortical arousal psychologically means complacency or lower vigilance. On the other hand, when very little melanin is produced by the melanocortin system, to increase production of vitamin D in low light environment, the melanocortin system appears to simultaneously raise cortical arousal as to protect the organism from freezing in the cold environment that accompany low level of sunlight. If increase in melanin reduces vigilance, then societies which have high concentration of melanin, in other words, societies with dark pigmentation, need to speak languages with extremely intense alarm sounds in order to raise the vigilance in these societies sufficiently for them to be able to organize and develop prosperous and advanced economies. In the past, Africa had great civilizations such as Egypt, which had profound impact on the world. Early Egyptians appear to be vigilant as they most likely spoke an alarm language 
It was that vigilance that allowed them to develop and prosper. Recently, we see great progress in places such as Rwanda. Again, you can see vigilance in the population. The people appear slightly shy, attentive and cooperative. These are some of the characteristics of vigilance and are advantageous for development. Rwandan vigilance appear to be caused by both the moderate amount of alarm sounds in the language and the trauma associated with the genocide. However, the Rwandan language, which contains some alarm sounds, and English, which is an alarm language and which is first language of a number of African societies, might not have enough intensity to raise the vigilance sufficiently for the African societies to develop advanced economies. African societies might need to install more intense alarm sounds into their languages as exists, for instance, in Mandarin Chinese. I believe that if African countries install intense alarm sounds into their languages, African countries will become some of the most prosperous and advanced countries in the world with its beautiful culture, climate and people. It would become an incredibly beautiful place. How would we go about installing alarm sounds into African languages so that they would contain more alarm sounds with higher intensity? The way to do it would be to install alarm sounds into the most frequently used words in the language. Here is an example of how one would add alarm sounds to the 10 most frequently used words in the Swahili language. If you would like to investigate this idea a little bit more closely, please check one of my book versions on the topic. Evolutionary Alarm Sounds Within Languages is the first version. Frighten the World into Prosperity is the second version. Motivate Poor Countries to Develop is the third version. I'm not listening to you. You only believe in science. That's probably why we never win. We never win because you are fat. Nature!